everybody. <laughs> Here we are for another adventure of our mammals around the world. So first, let's review our continents. So I'll put it over here and then Alexis, can you sing while I point to them? Asia, Europe, Africa, then down to Antarctica, North and South America, last of all Australia, Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Arctic and Southern too. Very good. So we've gone quite a few continents already. We started off in Australia and learned about all those really cool marsupials. And then we ventured over to Asia and learned about the tigers and the pandas. Last week, we went all the way down to Antarctica and found that the main mammals there are actually marine mammals. There's seals and whales, but not very many um, animals or creatures really live there. Now today, we're actually going to go directly from the south all the way up to the north, the Arctic region, and we're gonna to go to Europe. Now the Arctic region actually is all up at the top of our world. Um, it covers Europe, Asia, and North America. But we're in Europe today, so we're gonna talk about some um, animals that are just native to Europe, and then also a couple animals that are in the Arctic that are actually in Europe, Asia, and North America. So let's review what a mammal is. We're actually using the My Animal Notebook from the third grade Abeka curriculum. And if you go all the way in the back to page, I believe it's page 100, page 100, it gives you your mammal characteristics. So these are things that every mammal has. So Alexis, can you read us the five characteristics of mammals? They milk their babies and take good care of their young. No mammal has more than two babies. Oh, has more than four limbs. So that's number two. They have at least some hair or fur. All mammals have lungs and breathe air. All mammals are warm-blooded. Right, so good. So hopefully by the time we're all around the world, you'll remember all those characteristics of mammals. And I, we'd love to know who's um, watching with us today. So if you want to share your name and what your favorite mammal is, because we're actually going to be um, sharing a project we're going to be working on too. So it could be, the project can actually be your favorite mammal, or it can just be a mammal that you'd like to learn a little bit more about. So if you look on page number, I think it's page five. So let me just double check. That's right, because we used six and seven for Antarctic animals last week. So if you go to page five, and I know it looks backwards to you, but if you go to page five, it's gonna say my mammal, mammal report. report. Yes. So this is actually a page for everybody individually to pick your own mammal that you would like to learn more about. And it can be living on any continent in the world. It doesn't have to be a favorite animal. It could actually be- A dog. A dog, something as simple as a dog. So Alexis, would you share what a animal- A dog. So she did, she chose um, to you to do her mammal report on- On Polly. Dogs, yeah, and we do, we have a doggy named Polly. So the first thing that I asked everybody to do for their mammal report, you pick your animal, you pick your mammal, I'm sorry, not just any animal, but a mammal. And then number two, you have to find out where they live. And we found that out. What did we find out? Where do Dogs we... live in houses. Well, some do, but what continent do they live on? Well, the most area where they have pets is actually North America. Right, so we discovered that um, North America, specifically the United States of America, um, they actually have the most pet dogs in the whole world. But we discovered something kind of interesting that Norway, is it, was it Norway? Um, I th yeah, I, it was Norway. Yeah, I believe Norway actually. They don't have any stray dogs. Right, no stray dogs. Like it's not, it's against the law to have a stray dog. So like everybody just um, keeps them as pets. 
So that's that was kind of interesting here. So it looks like Matt's fave mammal is a tiger and Ella's is a dolphin. Wow, those are great ones. Yeah, and we found that the the tiger lives in Asia and dolphins are actually in quite a few different um, areas, especially more the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. But we actually discovered one in Antarctica last week that there is one kind of dolphin um, that lives in the um, Southern Ocean. I can't remember the name of it right now, <laughs> but um, it was a really pretty dolphin. It looked a lot like an orca. It had the black and white on it. It was a beautiful dolphin. So we're actually going to venture to Europe today. And see the unicorns. <laughs> well, yeah, we've actually discovered these beautiful horses that do look like unicorns. So here we're in Europe. We're going to look at what the habitats are in Europe. So we have the taiga, the temperate forest, the grasslands, and just a very small section of alpine, um, which is mountain region. And that is actually the Alps right there that are in Europe. And of course, there are marine mammals. Um, in the Arctic Ocean, most of the whales actually are in all the um, different um, oceans in the world, but that we did discover that the seals actually are very different. There's different seals in Antarctica versus um, the Arctic area, whereas the whales tend to be in both areas that are, the, they're actually the same kind of whale. So we thought that was kind of interesting. So let's go and check out some animals. Yes, yeah, so we're not going to show them quite yet. We're going to tell, we're going to get our paper ready, okay? I know she's excited because we've discovered these beautiful, beautiful horses that are native to a um, like right place in I, France. Like right when I woke up, there was her looking at the video of the the unicorn thing. I know, they look like unicorn horses. They're beautiful. So you're actually going to open up to page nine in your animal notebook. Or if you're like me and you just have a blank sketchbook, you're just going to open up to your next page. And we're going to write at the top, European mammals. So if you um, if you have the my animal, my animal notebook, there's already the word mammals there. So you're just going to write European right there next to it. And I'm going to put European up here for you. I was able. Oh, this is the right way. So there's the word European for you to write. It's E U R O P E A N. And that spells European. And then if you were to write Europe, you would just take off the A N. Cameron mm -hmm. horses, that's yep. what they are That's called. what we're going to do next. Yep, so there's that's the word European. So you're going to have European and then mammals on your paper. As you're taking notes, they don't have to be full sentences. You can just, I like to do my bullet points. So I like to do a bullet point. I write the mammal. I put a little dash. Mm. And then I just write a fact about it. So that way, because sometimes you don't really have time to write a whole sentence. Mm. So when you're taking notes, when you're like listening to something, you don't necessarily write full sentences. You're just writing facts down. So our first creature that we're going to talk about, our first mammal. It's a cabin horse. That's right. It's the Camargue horse. Camargue horse. So here is spelled Camargue horse. S-C-A-M-A-R-G-U-E. And then horse, H-O-R-S-E. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Kamar horse. Now, we didn't actually um, find many books on there, but there we did find one book that did show the Kamar horse. They live in actually just one, or they're native, actually to one, just one place in France. So I'm going to show you their picture there. But aren't they beautiful? There's these beautiful, beautiful white horses that um, they actually have black skin. So that's an interesting fact. So remember, as you're, as you're listening to me tell you facts, this is your chance to jot down, you know, one or two facts, or it really depends on your age. If you're younger, maybe you would just write the, the word Kamar course. And then maybe if you're older, you might put one, two, three, or even four like, facts I think down. I'm gonna write Kamar horse, black skin, white fur. Good. Yeah, that would be good. That's kind of an interesting fact is they do. They've got the black skin and the white fur, um, but they're beautiful, beautiful horses. When Because I couldn't really find a book much on it, then I'm actually going to use um, the iPad. So we'll see if it My trans... iPad. Oh, yeah, it's her iPad. <laughs> this is what she uses for her Rebecca video school. Um, but I'm hoping that it kind of goes through. Okay, so you can kind of see how beautiful these horses are. I'll try to make it so it doesn't Oh, you know, it might be too much of a glare. Oh, no, if I go down like that. So you can kind of see just how beautiful 
beautiful these horses are. I can, sh I can actually show them how their gallop sounds like. Yeah, but there are there. I'll actually share a YouTube video um, a, that has um, um, just, just shows how just beautiful and magnificent these horses are. They're actually the oldest breed of horse in the world, these Camargue horses. They live in France. That's where they're native to. And the interesting thing is they're actually, they're born like brown or sometimes even black. So their fur is um, much darker when they're born and they got very short little mane and a short little tail. And then as they grow up, like their skin is dark, they but swim their fur is white and they got a really long white mane and a beautiful long white tail. And they love the water. Mm -hmm, they do. In fact, they actually will swim in the water. Do they swim in deep parts of water? Not, no, not overly deep. They really, they prefer just like kind of um, running in the water because they live in the marshy area, um, which is Camargue, Camargue, France, is very marshy around there. Um, and here, actually, here's a good picture of the marsh that they live in. So there's a good picture of the marsh. Like kind of where rice grows, that's how you can picture it. Right, yeah, so yeah, it's very marshy. And the interesting thing is God gave them extra wide hoofs so that they can actually walk through the marsh and not get stuck. So it was. it's so cool how God created each animal so different, so specific to what their habitat would be. Um, they also um, will get a little bit of a gray coat in the winter time. So they're pretty much white but they do get a little bit of just that gray coat. I'll show you one more, um, one more picture. Let's see if I can get it to not, not glare too much, but you can kind of see. So probably anytime you've seen like a really fancy photograph of uh, some beautiful white horses running, it was probably these Camargue horses. They're absolutely gorgeous and they're native to French, which is in Europe. So Europe actually has 219 total land mammals. 41 marine mammals, so there's 260 mammals in all in Europe, but the interesting thing was only 59 are native. There were so many, native means that they actually were originally in Europe. There are, most of the mammals were actually brought in from other continents. And one of those sweet little mammals that actually is kind of getting overrun by its friends that have come to join it is this little red squirrel. See that little sweet red squirrel? So the red squirrel is native to Europe, um, but people have introduced the American gray squirrel. And the American gray squirrel actually um, is kind of, it ends up eating what the red squirrel wants. And because the red squirrel is a little bit pickier about it, what it eats, sometimes it doesn't have any food. So I'll go ahead and, oh, here's my paper. So for the next creature we're gonna write on your fact list is red squirrel. So here's your red squirrel. We'll go back to the bison in a little bit. So the red squirrel is red, R-E-D, and squirrel is S-Q-U-I-R-R-E-L. Red squirrel. So I'll read to you a little bit about the red squirrel and you pick some different facts that you'd like to um, add into your um, notebook as I'm reading. And again, remember, you don't have to write a whole sentence. Um, part of kind of note taking and, and things like that. For the Cameron horses, I actually wrote two, like a whole sentence. There's like two lines. Cameron horse, black skin, white fur, gray coat in winter. Good. So, yep. So she had time to write two. I was so, going to put babies brown, but. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So as you're kind of going through this and kind of getting used to note taking, because this is kind of a new concept, doing research and note taking. Um, up until now, where she just kind of listened to um, school. So this is kind of the time when you start doing research reports, this is a great time to learn how to take notes. So here's our sweet little red squirrel. Isn't he adorable? Aww. So he is, he's super cute. And here's one on the front cover too. And the, well, the thing I really like about the red squirrel is if you can see, look at these little tufts of hair. So we have red squirrels here in America. We do. Mm -hmm. not, not too many around where we are, but they don't have these little tufts of hair. That's basically the main difference between the European red squirrels and the American. But one of the big things is just that the American gray squirrels were introduced over in Europe, and now these sweet little squirrels um, are losing their habitat. One big thing is the acorns. 
So red squirrels cannot, that this is, this is a good fact. I know this is a good fact though. Red squirrels cannot digest acorns. And isn't that funny? Like we see squirrels all the time fact, eating acorns. In fact, sometimes I get like bowls of acorns and put it out for them. And then I see, watch them eat it and like. I know, so it's, it's really crazy that here, you know, we can't, um, they can't eat, they can't digest the acorns. So that's one big reason is they just, they don't have the food. Um, but they do have the sweet little ear tufts. And then this picture actually kind of showed how they get a little bit of a gray in their coat for the winter time. So this is their summer coat that's nice and red and auburn. Their little winter coat, you can see, I'll try to get a little closer here. You can see how gray, it gets like a little bit of gray fur on their, for their winter coat. So I thought that was kind of interesting too. And I think there was one more, I'm not sure where the other one was about the red squirrel. But today we ended up with a lot of different books that um, have the same creature in the different books. So now we're going to move on to our next creature. Oh, what fact did you write about the red squirrel? I'm curious. Picky of their food. That's a good one. They're picky on their food. You could say, oh, they've got the tufts of hair on their ear, the fur. You could say they can't digest acorns. Um, you could write that they're actually... Um, becoming endangered because of the gray squirrels that are um, eating all of their food. So there's a lot of facts you could have written for the red squirrel. So now we're gonna go back up here to the, oops, this side, the European bison. So the European bison is spelled E-U-R-O-P-E-A-N and then bison, B-I-S-O-N. Now keep that up there for just a minute. Now you did write European at the top of your page, so it's the same way, and then bison, B-I-S-O-N. The European bison is actually the largest land mammal in Europe. I've got a picture of some really sweet little babies. First I'll show you this picture though. This is the adult bison. And you say, well, wait a minute. The bison live in North America too, and they do. We have bison here in North America. But there's some differences between the European bison and the North American bison. So let's hear some of those. One of the funniest ones I thought was so funny that like you would never know by looking at it. The European bison has 14 ribs and the American bison only has 15 or has 15. So the American bison has one more section of ribs. You know, like your ribs have different bones and they look like lines. Well, the, um, bison, the European bison has 14 and the American has 15. And the European bison has more hair on his tail, but less hair on his body. So those are the big differences between the European bison and the um, American bison. But let me show you the picture of the sweet little baby bison. I always love to see the babies. Look, aren't they so sweet? So bison are so tall that a, ma a man, um, sorry, I'm trying to read backwards. I guess I can't really read backwards. I'm about to come up here. Bison are as tall as a man and live in groups called herds. You've probably heard that before. A lot of hoofed creatures, um, they're, called, they're in herds. But the European bison is the biggest and the heaviest mammal in Europe. But it can still jump over streams and run really fast. It needs the woodlands to survive because it eats leaves, trees, bark, and berries from those trees. Look at all those sweet little bison. So that's the European bison. So Alexis, what stood out to you about all the facts? I just put big and heavy because that was actually the, kind of the first thing that came to my they mind. They are. They're the big, heavy. And you can put the biggest, heaviest mammal in Europe. They're the biggest in Europe. And it does, they, um, they're herbivores, they eat leaves, trees, barks, and the berries from the trees. So there's a lot of different facts that you could write about your European bison. All right, our next mammal is the one that lives in the Alps. So it is called, oh oops, backwards. <laughs> We're down here. It is called the Alpine Marmot. Alpine is A-L-P-I-N-E, and marmot is M A R. M-O-T. Hmm, can anybody think of what they think a marmot might be? It's kind of an interesting name. Now, you can't guess because you've seen the picture already. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wonder if anybody can guess what is a marmot. It's kind of an unfamiliar word, but maybe some of you have heard of it. 
And I'd also like to hear if anybody has a guess of what other creatures would live in the Alps, in the mountains. If anybody can think of one. What do they think is the largest creature that lives in the Alps? So here's a picture of the Alps. That's the largest mountain in Europe. And our little creature, the Alpine marmot, is right here. He looks like a little muskrat, like what we have here, or a little groundhog or something. They're actually large squirrels, and they live in the mountains of Central and Southern Europe. They're active during the day, and they feed mostly on grass, flowers, seeds, and bulbs. They have really thick fur, a short little tail, and small ears. And you, as you can see on the little map here, this shows you where they live. They basically just live in the Alps. They live in a few other little mountain areas. Well, they also have winter sleep. So Alexis, can you come tell us about what does that, what is the um, winter sleep all about? It's called hibernation. And like they all have their huddled together in this little hole and then the last one covers it with dirt. Yeah, we thought, like, that, we thought that was kind of fun. So they work together to build a burrow and then they all snuggle in and they get cozy, cozy, warm. And they're like actually, yep, and they'll actually hibernate for six to seven months, which is a long, long time. So they'll hibernate for a long time, but then it's funny because after they all get in and they cuddle up, whoever is the last one in has to shut the door. <laughs> so the last one in puts all the dirt back in, covers up the hole, and they can cozy up and sleep for six or seven months. Can you believe that? Yep, it'd be just like this, cozy up. So if you're at, you're at home and it's kind of chilly, you can cozy up and burrow just like a little alpine marmot. So, Alexis, tell me, what did you write for your alpine marmot fact? Cute and furry. They are cute and furry, that's good. Or you could even write that they hibernate. You could write that they live in the Alps, which is the mountain range. Um, they also have an interesting thing. They can warn each other of danger. Like if there's an I eagle or a it. fox nearby, and they actually whistle. <whistles> they whistle their warning. So whistle cool. the warning. Mm -hmm. And they feed on grass, flowers, seeds, and bulbs. So those are lots of facts that you can write down for your alpine marmot. Which obviously, no battery. they Please only... Charge. Oops, yep. <laughs> I think well, our battery will last a little longer. I think we have... Oh, we only have one more. But before we do our last one, I just wanted to share, since we talked about the Arctic, and last week someone thought that um, the polar bears were living in Antarctica. I said, oh no, they live in the Arctic. So I just want to share that with you here. Here's our little polar bear. Yep, so this one actually, this will live in, in the Arctic in Europe, um, Asia, and North America. And they're suited for cold climates. And interest, interesting, um, another interesting thing is they actually are the same as the Camaro horses, black skin, white fur. So why do you think the polar bear might have black skin? To keep warm. Mm -hmm. The black will attract the heat. Because in wintertime, that sun barely rises in the tundra. And it's freezy and windy. So if they can hold into that, they can hold that heat. That's a really good thing. And I wanted to show you Iceland, too. Her black coats are nice. She has a black coat. Mm -hmm. We so, should used to. Yep, so Iceland is um, part of Europe, too. It's an island Did in Europe. Did you know that Iceland is actually Greenland? Well, this part, this is part the part that's in the Arctic here. So look, you can see all the beautiful ice. Mm -hmm. And look at this sweet little Arctic fox down here. So the Arctic fox makes its home in Iceland. It's actually Iceland's only native mammal. So, or land mammal, I'm sorry. There's marine mammals that are around, but the only native land mammal is the Arctic fox. I found that very interesting. So you can write that down if you want to in your notes, or um, that was just kind of like a little mini tidbit that I wanted to share before I got to our last creature, which is it lives in the Arctic. Well, so, please be the cute one. Please be the cute it's an one. ermine. Yes! Ermine, by the way. Well, it's ermine. It's how you, I know it looks like ermine, but it's actually ermine is how you say it. So go ahead and write ermine. And um, it's E-R-M-I-N-E. E -E. I'm wondering, does anybody know what an ermine is? I know ermine, what it is. Well, I know you do. You can't guess. <laughs> does anybody know what an ermine is? This is kind of an interesting one. And again, it lives in the Arctic. So it's not just strictly in Europe. It's also in the Arctic and Asia and North America. But it is a strictly an Arctic animal, the ermine. 
Does anybody have a guess? Me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll show you. It's a cute one. Look. It's a rat. I'm just kidding. No, isn't it adorable? <laughs> so here it's we like have our otter, book. Just like the snuggly puppy. Here we have our book about the ermine. This one's by Grace Hansen. So she took all these beautiful pictures and she wrote some facts about the ermine. Cute as can be. And this one's nice because I can actually kind of fold, show you the picture and fold it back and read the words. Oh, actually this one doesn't bend as good. So maybe I'll have to kind of go like this so you can see. Um, but there's a sweet little ermine. So the Arctic is at that northernmost part like we talked about. The weather there is freezing and any animal that lives in the Arctic is a tough one. But this little ermine, does he look very tough? Nope. No, he looks soft and sweet and snuggly. And we actually have a little white dog that kind of reminds me of the ermine. Look at this sweetheart. So here's our little ermine. The ermines actually belong to the weasel family. Many of them call the Arctic home. In the Arctic, they live on the tundra and the rock and the ice. So on the Arctic tundra, there's no trees. It's just rock and ice. And there is some moss that grows. So the ermines are small mammals. They grow to be only five to 12 inches. That's pretty small when you think about it. If you have your ruler, you can look and see five to 12 inches. Their tails are no more than five inches long. So in the winter time, their coats are thick and white. The tips of their little tails are black and their coats keep them warm. Oh, look at that sweet face. The ermines have sharp claws. Their claws are lightweight and they help them easily walk across the snow. So that's, that's a pretty interesting fact that they have claws to help them walk across the snow. So the ermines sleep during the day and they do most of their hunting at night. So that means they're, what's that called? Um, nocturnal. That's right, nocturnal if they hunt at night. They like to eat small mammals like mice. They also like to eat birds and eggs, so they are carnivores. In the Arctic, the ermines, or ermines live in the underground burrows. They also live in the little crevices of the rocks. So if they can't burrow down, let's say it's too frozen there, they can just find a little crevice in a rock. Look how cute that little face is. They just look so snuggly, even though they're not. Wild creatures are not. So here's the babies. The ermines' home is called a den. Females have their babies in dens, and a litter can have three to 18 kits. So a kit, a kit is a baby ermine. That's another good fact. Kit is a baby ermine. And the mamas can have just three babies, or they can have 18 babies. And here they are, newborn. They're blind and helpless at birth, and they drink their mama's milk till they're 12 weeks old. Then they stay with their mama for about a year. During this time, they learn to survive. So it's a whole year they can spend with their mamas. So I thought that was a really sweet little creature of a little ermine. <laughs> now we've all heard of weasels, I'm sure, but this is a specific one. It's in the weasel family, um, but it lives up in the Arctic area. So now we're gonna do some drawing. So if you wanna get out your pencils, hopefully you've got lot, lots of nice facts. Does anybody wanna share a fact that they learned? Um, out of any of the creatures that we've talked about today, any of the ones that are in Europe, if they have a, or if they have a favorite creature, let's say, oh, I really like this one. We'd love to hear any favorite creatures. So what was your fact? Oh, you're still writing. I'll let you finish writing and then I'll ask you about your fact. Now what we've done so far is we put our facts on one side and we put our drawings on the other side. And again, if you have your My Animal Notebook, you're gonna write your facts on the green side. I have mine and then you're gonna draw your pictures on the white side to the left. So go ahead and share your fact about the ermine. All right, ermine. Sharp claws, they're nocturnal, they eat eggs, mice, and birds, and they're also cute and fluffy. They are, you're right, they are. So now we're gonna go over to your white page and we're gonna do some drawing. We're gonna flip over our, um, we're gonna flip over our camera so you can see our drawing. Um, first, I'm gonna get up my ermine. You know, I think I'm gonna do this one. This one's pretty cute. All right, so we'll get ready. Let's see if I can flip this over. Oh, there we go. Okay, so when I'm drawing animals, 
I like to see their shapes. That's like the or easiest way. So don't look at all the little details. See if I can get this down right. Um, you wanna really focus on the shapes of your um, animals. So we see the ermine here. It has very much, like it has the rounded ears here. A little bit of a pointier nose. Um, very much like a little bit of a cat-like, almost like a little dog-like. So we're gonna, I'm gonna do the ermine kind of at the bottom here. I'm gonna do mine kind of coming off into my page just like that one is. So I'm gonna do it at the bottom left here. I'm gonna do it at the bottom left corner here. I'm just drawing my little ermine kind of coming in here. So I'm gonna start with his little ears because I like those little rounded ears. Those are very, very distinct features. So there's the little rounded ears and I just kind of connect them with this head. And then you don't want a complete point, but you do kind of want to come to a little bit of a point. So almost a curved triangle a little bit. So you're gonna to come to a curved triangle and we're gonna put a sweet little nose here at the end and his little mouth and his cute little eyes. And I'm just gonna draw a little bit of fur inside his ears. And then we're gonna give him some whiskers too. And then we're gonna make his body, now they have a very long body, just like weasels or pine martens. And we're gonna kind of draw his little claws up here. Cause remember how they have sharp claws? Does anybody remember why they have sharp claws? So that they can grip onto the ice. That's right, because it's snowy and icy. And slippery. Mm -hmm. And this way they can definitely be a little safer. So here's our sweet little ermine. And so we're gonna label our ermine. So let's see if you remember how to spell that. Or you can look at your other page. E-R-M-I. And E. There's our sweet little ermine. So let's draw a few more of our European creatures. How I'm drawing on the horse thing. Oh yeah, we're, well, we're definitely gonna be drawing the horse too. So should we draw the horse next or the buffalo? My drawing is terrible, but no, it's okay. Well, we're gonna draw a horse next. So how about if we do a horse kind of coming from this side now? So we're gonna do the Camargue horse, which are those beautiful white horses that um, Alexis and I were noticing it. that they look like um, a unicorn. They do, they really look like the unicorn. So the horse, you kind of want to draw it, start with a diagonal line, start with a diagonal line, and then you're gonna kind of curve. And then you're gonna kind of go out just a wee bit and then curve up again, because the horses have that very strong jaw. And then before I finish doing the mane, I'd like to actually do the ears next. So the ears are just two little triangles. And then the one of the other distinctive factors of the Kamar horse is they have such beautiful long hair. I mean, just gorgeous, gorgeous long hair. So I'm gonna draw a really long, beautiful mane on my Kamar horse. Absolutely beautiful hair. And they're just, they're so pretty as they run through the water. So then you're gonna kind of come down there to like his chest area here. And maybe I'm gonna try to draw mine running a little bit because they like to run. So I'm gonna kind of almost go at another angle here. So it's almost like the, a teepee or the top of a mountain mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. And they remember they have extra wide hooves. So I'm gonna do a wider hoof than I would normally draw for a horse. So draw the legs coming down. There's one, and then the other one's gonna be back here because it's running. Again, a nice wide hoof, because that was one of their, their distinguishing features. Now, has anybody seen a picture of the Kamar horse and just not realized that's what it was? Because I know Actually, I have. yes. Yeah, I have, I just didn't realize that's what it was. Because yeah, a lot of times you will see those beautiful white horses running in the water we're gonna give her her eye. I'm gonna give her eyelashes. And then I'm just gonna do like a little swirl for the nostril. A little swirl up there for the mouth. And that, now that really looks like a unicorn. Yep. The way you draw it. And then I'm gonna let it kind of splash in the water. 
So I feel like they like they love to oh, run in the water. Like deer. That's okay. That's why sometimes it's good to follow along, and then you can kind of copy is what I'm doing, and that'll kind of help you with um, the different shapes. So here's our beautiful um, Camargue horse. So let's label her, or it can be a him if you want yours to be a him, <laughs> which is C A M A R G U E. Oops, horse. Yeah, I also want to do the European bison since that is our That's largest exactly what creature. I'm doing right now. Good. Well, let's do it together, okay? That helps when we do it together. So let me grab my bison. I think he was at the beginning of this book. Yep, there he is. So let's look at the bison. Whoops. Let's look at our bison here. So you can see he has like a little bit of a hump on his back. See that? You can see he's got very distinct horns here. Um, he's got, definitely his nostrils are distinctive, and he's got a long, like an oval shape. So you, do you notice all those interesting different um, shapes for our bison? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually end up making ours backwards. Since I have my horse coming this way, my bison um, will be on this side. So I'm going to draw my bison kind of up at the top, and then we're going to fit in a little red squirrel too. So our bison we're going to start with. And he's, he's going to be in the distance because our horse is kind of up close. So our bison's going to be kind of off in the distance here. So let's start with his head. His head's very much like an oval shape, like a long oval. I but then like a cow head. Yeah. Well, so you want it tall. Yours is taller at the bottom. That's why it looks like a cow head. You want taller at the top and more narrow at the bottom. That'll give more of a bison look instead of a cow look. And at the bottom... His nostrils almost are like, it's kind of like a number three, like a backwards number three on its side. So there's his little nostril. Let's put little, two little holes and then kind of keep his hair. They've got, they're very furry. They have to keep warm. And then their eyes are kind of more here at the side of their head. So we're just going to draw their little eyes kind of at the side here. And we're going to give them a little bit extra fur. And then you can actually go back through when we're done and you can give them lots of fur if you want to. So let's do those distinctive oh, man, that looks like a So here we go. <laughs> yeah, he does a little bit look. Yeah, he does kind of look mean. Like so maybe for, I need to make him look a little nicer, huh? Like first when I looked at that head, it looked like Jafar's head. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah he does kind of look mean. Maybe if I give him some eyelashes. There, he doesn't look quite as mean now. <laughs> Mine just looks like a and then, cow in a barn. Yep, and then the ears are just kind of like underneath like that. It looks like a cow in the barn. Aww. <laughs> and then, remember we noticed that hump on his back? Remember that little hump, that distinctive hump? Um, That's what we're going to draw next. So we're going to, I don't have qu quite a lot of room to show the hump, but we're just going to kind of do the hump here and just kind of go down. There. And then in the front, too, he has a little bit of extra fur up here. He's definitely not as furry as a yak or anything like that, but he's pretty furry. But if we remember right, the American bison, they actually have more fur than the European bison, which I thought was interesting. And they've got that the one less rib. The European bison only has those 14 ribs instead of the 15. There we go. There's our European bison. And since we wrote European um, bison, actually we can just, we can write both words, European and bison, because they are distinctive than just a typical bison. So European bison is E-U-R-O-P-E-A-N bison. It's B-I-S-O-N. European bison. Very good. So we've got our European bison. We have our Camargue horse. We have our sweet little ermine. Mm. And you know what? We have room right here to fit in our sweet little red squirrel. So cute. So let me find one of the best pictures. Oh, I think there's I one on the front. Is we got so many books, sometimes I have a hard I time keeping track of do... all of them. I think all I have to do is ermine, actually. So I'm going to use this picture here because it's a really nice side profile. And there it is. It's eating a nut. But do you, if you remember, they don't. They can't digest the acorns properly. So it's actually not an acorn, that's a chestnut. So chestnuts are actually their favorite nuts that they love to eat. And look at those sweet little tufts on the ear. 
Those are so, so cute. So we're gonna draw our little sweet little red squirrel and that'll be our last European creature. Nice. All right, so I'm gonna put my little um, squirrel here, right in the middle. Just have to get this up a little bit. There, so I can see. So we're gonna look again at the shape. See how the, um, the head curves in, the tufts definitely go up quite a bit. And then the back and then a really bushy tail. And I actually might draw my tail up a little bit more, I think. So let's start with this sweet little head. So he kind of comes at an angle here. And then his the rest, because he's got a little bit of a pointy, um, not super pointy, but kind of like the ermine, where it's not super pointy, but it is a little bit pointy. And I'm going to draw him with a nut, too. So he's going to want so, to eat that nut. So then I'm going to draw it. They actually have little curved ears like this. But it's actually the tuft of hair that goes up. So I'm going to draw that little tuft of hair to go up a little bit. And then his eye. And let's see, on the back, it kind of curves back here. Loops around. Oh, it's going to run into our Kamar course a little bit. So here we go. And then their arms. They have like little hands, of course, to get their nuts. And I'm going to draw its chestnut because it loves to eat the chestnut. It just can't eat those acorns. So when the gray squirrels eat all their chestnuts, the little red squirrels don't have food left. And they can't survive. They can't. And they also do hibernate. So they can't survive um, the winter unless they have enough food in their belly to hibernate properly. So it's just that they can't eat acorns or they can't like... They can't break it open with the shell. That's a very good question. So they can't, it's not that they can't break it open. They, they know how to break it open because the acorn is just like a chestnut. They oh, both yeah. have the shell outside, but. They can't digest the green part. Right. Just how like some people may have a um, hard time digesting gluten or dairy um, or things like that. That's how the little red squirrel is with his, with the, um, with the acorns, they can't digest the acorns, which is very interesting that a squirrel wouldn't be able to digest nuts. But I think what happened is God made them native there and they didn't have competition until man decided to bring in the American gray squirrel. It was a, um, the human mammals there that brought them over. And then the poor little red squirrel is actually on the endangered list right now. So we're going ahead and um, label our red squirrel over here. We have red, which is R-E-D, squirrel, S-Q-U-I-R-R-E-L, red squirrel. So there we have our European creatures. We have our European bison, Camargue horse, and our red squirrel and the ermine. So did anybody have a favorite European animal they'd like to share? The white there's, thing. There's a lot of similarities to the European and the North American animals. Let me flip us back around. There we go. So yeah, there's a lot of similarities to the North American and the European mammals, um, but there's just a slight, slight difference to distinguish them. And um, again, there's some like the red squirrel and the Kamar horse and the ermine that are um, native to the areas. And the, actually the Arctic fox, remember it was native to um, Iceland. So there's a lot of different ones. So I just want to share one last thing. If you are doing the mammal report with us, so you had homework. So if anybody did their homework and want, would like to share that, we'd love to know which mammal that you'd like to do your report on. And I don't know if maybe Matt, maybe Matt's doing a tiger and Ella's doing her, hers on a dolphin. That could very well be. Then Alexis, tell everybody what you chose. Uh, I chose a dog. Mm -hmm. So she's going to... Um, learn more and more about the canines of the world. So you want to pick your mammal. So I'll kind of help you step by step on how to make a research report. So you, you chose your mammal and you need to figure out where it lives. What's its habitat for one and two, um, what continent, where or what country does it live in? Or like some creatures, like remember the panda bear, live in a very small little area in China. Oh, and Sarah's was the European bison was her favorite. Okay, so yes, that's what they chose for their and the um so Matt chose the tiger and Ella chose the dolphin. Those were really good choices. So yeah, your first step is finding out where they live. 
not just like I said, not just not sure what continent or it could be and also what habitat they live. So since she chose dogs, their their habitat tends to be in homes, but also can be outdoors. Um, they do live all around the world. So she's we're going to have to she's going to have to figure out exactly um, like how far and far north do the dogs go and how far south in the world? Because dogs have a very large reign and dolphins as well. They have a large reign. Now the tiger, as we know, they only live in Asia. So maybe you can find out more exactly um, where they um, live in Asia. So that was your homework for figuring out your animals. Um, you have your mammal, you figure out where they live and their habitat. And then um, now your next step is you need to find out what they eat. Are they an omnivore? Dog food. <laughs> Are they an omnivore, which only eats plants? Are they an, er I'm sorry, not an, the, the herbivore only eats plants. So the herbivores eat plants. You have your carnivore that only eats meat or an omnivore that eats both plants and animals. So what is a dog, Alexis? Dog food. Well, does eat dog food, but think about the human food because we do give our dogs some safe human food. So think about the steak. human food. Yep, some little Eggs, steak fat. Meat. Yeah, so it does eat ham, meat. Ham, but fish skin, blubber. Yep, so but what else? It can all, she she can also have carrots. Carrots, chickpeas. So think about that. What kind of what kind of creature is that? Is that omnivore, herbivore, or carnivore? omnivore it is it's an omnivore so that's the next thing you're going to find out is is it an omnivore carnivore or an herbivore and then exactly what it does eat right and then every week i'll give you a new fact that you have to learn and then before you actually write in your um, mammal notebook it's best to actually write these facts on a separate sheet of paper because you want to keep your um the page in your mammal notebook here i'll turn back to it on page five um, you want to keep that um, as nice as you can. So we're actually not going to write any facts in here. We're only going to write our facts on a separate sheet of paper. And it can be a scrap paper. It can be a, a notebook if you want to use a notebook. Anything like that. So that way, when you are, you're actually going to do a, what's called a rough draft. A rough draft is going to be, you're going to write on a separate paper. And then your final draft is what you'll write in your animal notebook. But we're not even go we're not even to the draft yet. Right now we're just gathering facts. So step one is gathering your data. You're gathering, you know, what mammal you chose, where it lives, what's its habitat. So where where it lives is location it lives and the habitat in which it lives. Now your next step is omnivore, herb herbivore, carnivore, and what exactly does it eat? And actually, you know what? We have a bonus. I want you to also find out if any other creatures eat it. So the dogs, what creatures would eat a dog? What a creatures wolf. eat the dolphin? What creatures a eat wolf. the tiger? If there are any, they may, they may be the top of the food chain. They might not have anybody eat them, but that's another good thing to, to figure out. So the, a couple ways you can research, you can get books at the library or you can actually look on the internet. So it's good to get um, information from more than one source because we notice, like even with the blue whale, we had some facts that like one, one book said one thing, one book said another. So then sometimes we check the publication date, see, well, which is the newest book? Maybe 10 years ago, they didn't know the right answer. But then we also like to research it online. So there's a lot of ways to find facts. So we hope you have a lot of fun finding facts. And next week, we want to hear more about your um, mammals that you chose and some more information about them. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Bye. Bye.